What's going on everyone? This is Luke from Southview Sports and welcome back to another video of the Miami Heat offseason trade target series. This video in particular is going to be a little bit different than the rest of the videos in this series. Not only am I going to discuss the possibility of a Ben Simmons trade to the Miami Heat, but I'm also going to talk a lot about the current Ben, si ben Simmons situation in Philly, dive into his past a little bit, and talk about what his future could look like. So I'm going to separate this video up into two parts. The first part is going to be about Ben Simmons, the player, what he's done so far in Philly and what the Sixers have done wrong in developing him. And the second part of this video is going to be about the possible trade to the Heat, which I will discuss fully. I just want to remind you guys to go ahead and like and subscribe if you enjoy the video and if you enjoy content like this. Also make sure to go ahead and hit that post notification bell because you guys know what that YouTube algorithm sometimes, even if you are subscribed, my videos still won't pop up. So go ahead and turn on that bell so you don't miss a single video. Also make sure to go, go ahead and comment down below your thoughts on the current Ben Simmons situation in Philly and if you would like to see Ben Simmons on the heat. So coming into the season, I had a very, very cold take. Uh, I saw how the Sixers were constructed. I really liked the acquisitions of both Danny Green and Seth Curry. I thought they would provide Philadelphia with a ton of spacing and allow Ben Simmons so much room to work. And I really thought he would take that next step as a scorer. So I had Ben Simmons initially as a dark horse MVP candidate. Obviously, as the season has moved on, that has not been the case. Instead of Ben Simmons' scoring output increasing because of all this new space in the S to work with, we have instead seen his scoring output reach his lowest points. So Ben Simmons this year averaged a career low 14.3 points per game. We haven't really seen that next step when it comes to his shooting, and we just saw a less aggressive version of Ben Simmons than what we've seen in the past three years. His scoring only decreased come playoff time, he only averaged 11.9 points per game in the playoffs, and his free throw shooting was historically bad at only 34.2%. Ben Simmons seems to be the next example of the list of young Philadelphia 76ers players who's flamed out early in their careers. We saw the first example of this with Neuron Zoel, who was, the, who was a top 10 pick in that 2014 NBA draft. Noel had his best two scoring seasons with the Sixers, but then quickly flamed out as a scorer after that. We then saw another example with Jaleel Okafor, who was the third overall pick in that 2015 NBA draft. He had his best season as a rookie. He averaged 18 points and 7 rebounds per game. In his sophomore season, he took a major step back, only averaging 12 points per game. And since then, he's only been serviceable as a backup center around the NBA. The most notorious of these flame out examples has to be Markel Fultz, who is that number one overall draft pick in the 2017 NBA draft over the likes of Jason Tatum and, and um, De'Aaron Fox. And with Fultz, he did suffer that major shoulder injury, which definitely changed things a lot as far as his career traje trajectory. But the 76ers were never able to develop that jump shot back, and the Sixers traded him to the Orlando Magic in his third NBA season. And since then, he's actually been able to find success in his career despite the ACL injury he suffered in the beginning of this season. Simmons, uh, at least for right now, appears to be continuing this trend of young Sixers players flaming out. And this is really weird considering that all these uh, young player flameouts have happened over the course of not only multiple coaching staffs, but also multiple front offices. So it's really weird how there's been this constant trend of the Sixers failing to develop young players. Ben Simmons has appeared to lose so much confidence when it comes to his scoring game, not only over the course of the season, but especially in the playoffs, and I blame a lot of this on Sixers head coach Doc Rivers. As we saw in the playoffs, Simmons had a pretty much non-existent role in a lot of the Sixers half-court sets. A lot of the times, we would just see Ben Simmons just standing in the dunker spot while the Sixers offense would run through Joel Embiid and either Seth Curry or Tobias Harris. It was just so frustrating to watch how useless Simmons was in a lot of what the Sixers were trying to run. I mean, yeah, Simmons is a, is a transition player, but that doesn't mean you have to completely ignore him in your half-court offense. I mean, we didn't see uh, Doc Rivers utilize any post-down or post-back screens. In order to get Simmons open looks in the paint, as obviously finishing at the basket is Simmons' strength on offense, he didn't use any curl screens that would get Simmons downhill. He just had him just standing there in the dunker spot doing nothing. Some of this, I bet, is due to the hack of Simmons tactic that the Hawks would implement where they would force Ben Simmons to go to the free throw line in the second and fourth quarters of a lot of their games. And obviously this worked because Ben Simmons shot a historically bad 34.2% from the free throw line this playoff run. 
I could imagine Doc Rivers did not want to have Ben Simmons with the ball that often, especially in the half court sets where he's more susceptible, susceptible to being fouled. But even if this was the case, why would Doc Rivers put Simmons out there on the floor in the first place? I mean, he net 34 minutes per game in the playoffs. If he was that much a liability in, in your half court offense, then why wouldn't you just sub him out and sub in a player like Tyrese Maxey who played very well in the Hawks series? And who knows, maybe if Doc Rivers was able to scheme a way for Ben Simmons to get open looks near the basket and just build his confidence, that he would have shot better. You know, a player who's confident is more likely to shoot better from the free throw line. Building on this confidence thing that I mentioned, I would it would not surprise me if Ben Simmons goes to see a sports psychologist this offseason. Uh, I don't want to speculate on what Simmons has been dealing with mentally as far as his confidence and such because, like I said, it's all speculations. There's, there's, nothing, there's nothing set in stone. I'm just saying what I'm thinking. It's obvious that whether it's because of the Sixers game plan or Simmons' lack of free throw shooting, that his confidence is at, is at an all-time low. I mean, I can say this because basketball-wise, he's always been like that guy. I mean, going back to his high school days, he was the number one recruit out of the number one prep school at the time, which was Montfort. He was the number one overall draft pick coming out of college from LSU. And he's had this successful young career so far where he's just had this high confidence. I mean, that's been one of the things that media and coaches alike have said about Simmons, that he's a very high confidence player. And this might be the first time in his short NBA career that he's really felt this adversity when it comes to his confidence. So it would not surprise me at all if we saw Ben Simmons go to a sports psychologist to really resolve this issue. So I want to transition now into the possibility of Ben Simmons getting traded to a team like the Heat. It's becoming more and more apparent that Ben Simmons will not be part of the Sixers next year. When asked post-game about what was the turning point of the game for the Sixers, Joel Embiid replied, and I quote, I'll be honest, I thought the turning point was when we, I don't know how to say it, is when we had an open shot and we made one free throw. So that's obviously a direct shot at Ben Simmons playing the game in which he passed up a wide open dunker layup and gave it off to Matisse Thibel who got fouled and only hit the one free throw. There was also a comment made by Doc Rivers when asked if Ben Simmons was a championship level point guard and Doc Rivers replied that he's not sure. So it's obvious that there's some uh, some turmoil right now between the six between some of the Sixers players and coaches and Ben Simmons. So I really think he, Ben Simmons uh, needs a change of scenery. So let's talk about Ben Simmons in the heat now. I'm not even going to discuss possible trade packages because frankly, I don't even know. I mean, I've heard from multiple people that Ben Simmons will require assets to be traded for. And I've also heard from multiple people that Ben Simmons is a negative asset and that the Heat would not have to trade anything to get him. So I'm, yeah, I'm not even going to discuss packages because frankly, it's so up in the air right now and I don't even know. One thing is for certain though, is that if the Heat did trade for, uh, for Ben Simmons, that they would have to give up a lot of money in return. There's two ways they can do this. They could either one, accept the team options of both Andre Iguodala and Goran Dragic and trade both those contracts to the Sixers, or if Duncan Robinson signs with Philly, the Heat could perform a sign and trade with Duncan and one of either Dragic or Iguodala in exchange to the Sixers for Ben Simmons. Frankly, I don't even think the Heat would consider this trade in the first place as there were reports that Jimmy Butler and Ben Simmons really didn't have the best chemistry when they both played together in Philly, so I doubt Pat Riley and that Heat front office would want to combine those two players again, especially if Jimmy Butler does not like the trade. Let's just say hypothetically though that both Butler and Simmons have hashed out their differences and that Butler would be open to the trade. What would this? What would a Heat team look like with Ben Simmons on it? So the Heat would be locked into three max contract guys and Jimmy Butler, who's expected to receive a max contract this offseason, Bam Adebayo's max contract, and Ben Simmons' max contract. So that's a lot of money to be tied into three players who cannot space the floor. Uh, I do have to say, though, that the possible defense of Bam Adebayo, Ben Simmons, and Jimmy Butler would just be incredible to watch. I mean, the Heat already have one of the best defenses in the NBA, and I would expect the Heat to possibly have the best defense in the NBA if they do acquire Ben Simmons. The thing is though, their offense, especially come playoff time, would be so, so weak. I mean, especially in today's modern NBA, you cannot have three players on the court at the same time who can't shoot. 
I mean, that's horrible, especially in playoff time when your, your weaknesses get exposed. That would just be a recipe for disaster. One thing that the Heat could do is they could trade for Ben Simmons while his value is at its lowest. Hopefully his value would go up during the season and they could move Simmons at the trade deadline. Uh, I got that idea from Austin, he's at Chef Trilly on Twitter, but I really would not be that thrilled with this. I mean, that's a lot of moving parts and that's really not something that I would be particularly thrilled with. The only way in which I see this trade end up working is if Jimmy Butler is able to rekindle his shooting touch that he had in Minnesota and if Bam Adebayo is able to develop an outside shot. That's the only way which I think this trade would be able to work. And even then, the spacing would still be questionable at best. So that's gonna be it for today, guys. I mean, this has really been one of, the, one of my favorite videos so far on this channel. I'm switching it up a little bit. I'm having this Ben Simmons pickup uh, video playing in the background. So if you guys like the addition, tell me, yes, I like it down in the comments below. Also make sure to comment your thoughts on like I said, what Ben Simmons' situation is in Philly, and if you would like to see him in a Heat uniform. The last time I'm going to say it, make sure to like and subscribe. That's always good. Turn on post notifications. You guys know the drill. With that being said, I'll catch you later. Peace.